Howdy folks, it's a tall turtle here. Welcome back to Explain 11. We are in the middle of our flight from Geary to Cincinnati in the 727-100 by FlyJSM. If you have no idea what we're talking about, please watch the first part of this two-part video because we're just going to go right into this. No further introduction. And it is time to descend. So we're already set to 5,000 feet. We already blew through top of the descent because I was chit-chatting and talking. Let's get this set to 310 for descent. Let's bring back throttles. Let's come down here and let's do the new alt select. Boom, there we go. Let's use IS hold. So what it's going to do is slow us down to 310 or so. And then we'll start descending. I will use throttles to control the rate of descent at about 1,000 feet per minute. I calculated top of the descent in my flight plan, which we talked about at length in the previous part. In the previous video, which is part one. I'm not going to talk about my flight plan again. We're just going to continue on here. I will probably have to adjust our descent and use spoilers. That's the plan. I'd rather come in high and use spoilers once we get to this insanity VOR versus coming in too low and cruising over everybody's heads at 5,000 feet for 10,000 miles. So there we go. We just crossed VOR 112. So now it's time to go to one, what is it? We go to 117. So let's do heading select. Let's go to 117.3, and we're going to get there at 124 degrees. 124 degrees, so let's go 124, and localizer's picking it up. Locks, let's do nav lock. There we go. Let's double check everything. Descending. All right, let's get some more throttles in there because we're descending at 2,500 feet per minute. So, descending about 310 at 1,000 feet per minute. Now it's going to go up and bob around a little bit. That's just how this works. I will control that. We're going to head towards Cincinnati VOR at 124 degrees. We're only 57 miles out. So we might have to come down a little steeper. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, what else are we going to do? We're set. That's it for top of descent. Let's check our checklist. Whoops. At 18,000 feet, we need to do the new barometer. Seatbelt's already on. 90 lights too soon. Auto brakes. We're going to need the spoilers. But where's my spoiler view? Where's my spoiler view? I have a spoiler view somewhere around here. Um, there it is. To arm spoilers, it's this button there, but we're probably going to have to use them. Um, what's going on here? Uh, it still is not really intercepting the VOR. Not sure to be worried about it. All right, we're at 20,000 feet. Let's see, what do we need to do? We need to get the weather. So we can, um, Cincinnati, where's Cincinnati? There it is. So we can set our barometer in a short amount of time. Let's see, do they have an ATIS? They do, 135.3, come down here, 135.3. And let's see, hopefully they're using runway 27 because that's what I'm set up for. Runway 27, perfect, 3007. 3007, runway 27, excellent. Good. What do we need to do? I just need to keep recalculating our descent rate because we're probably going to come in too high because we've got 45 miles to get to 5,000 feet. So that is what we have. So we need to come down 14,000 feet. 1,000 feet per minute is 14 minutes. 14 times 5 is 50, 60, 70. Yeah, so we're not coming down fast enough so let's bring this down about 1500 feet per minute and of course we can slow ourselves down as well to buy us some time slowing us down horizontally will buy us time vertically so that we can um, make it got that that was a lot of information at once coming up on the Cincinnati metropolitan area look over there why do I have a spinny circle that's scaring me very cool so what are we doing we are watching our speed, we're watching our, not, not watching our speed, that's held in place. We're watching our descent rate though. The double line is pointing at our VOR. Let's come down here again. So we're pointing at the 113.3. Let's get the localizer in there, which is 108.7, 108.7. So what's gonna happen is we'll use heading bug once we get past 117.3, 108.7, we'll switch to 276 degrees to come in at runway 27, which is 276 degrees. I know I'm talking fast, that's because there's a lot going on right now at the same time. 
18,000 feet, 3007 on the barometer then. Let's go the right way. We were 3007. There we go. Um, it's finally picking up that VOR at the right thing. Let's get any bug set. And let's see. Um, actually, let's set any bug to 90, because that's what we're going to do once we cross the VOR 32 miles. So we're going to go due west, or due east, which is 90 degrees. There we go. Okay. Um, let's see. What are we doing? Nothing. Why does it look like we're so close to the ground? We have to come down 12,000 miles. Oofta. That is a lot of information. But we're set. I think we got this. All right. I want to keep an eye on things up front. I want to give you some sightseeing for a couple of minutes. In 27 miles, we have to figure out how we're going to vector ourselves in to the airport. So I'll see you then. Why does it seem like we're so low? Yes, that's your airport already, but that's okay. Um, we're 16 miles off from the VOR, but then we gotta go out 15 more. So let's slow this all the way down to 250. Let's bring those spoilers out to help slow us down. We're still on target though. We're still on our plan, we're still on target um, because we gotta go beyond this airport to approach it, right? So our runway is right here. It's this long one right here. 27. So we're going to go over the airport, go way out here to intercept the ILS, and then come down. So I know it looks like we're too high, but we're not. We're exactly where we need to be. So we're at 250 now. Excellent. Coming down about 2,000 feet per minute. We don't need to come down that steeply. Let's get our approach stuff ready. So we're going to put our TO, whoops, we're going to put our brakes, where are brakes? Right here to max because I'm a wimp. Truly for land, or we need landing lights now. Let's do landing lights now, as we're crossing over the airport. Um, truly for flaps, truly for gear. Just keep an eye on our speed, keep an eye on our descent rate. And um, we're about ready to cross the VOR. Then we're gonna, VOR's right about here. So we're gonna go out this way, come around. One thing I thought was awesome during sightseeing though, is that we were able to see both the Indianapolis area and Cincinnati area from the air at the same time, at like 14,000 feet. That was pretty awesome, I thought anyway. Um, hopefully you did too. But anyway, there's the airport. That's where we're headed. It did say runway 27 in use. Alrighty, we're six miles before the VOR, and then we're going to fly, not manually, but using the heading bug at 90 degrees, which we already have set. Like I said, once we're 15 miles out, we will um, be able to turn around. It's definitely going to be interesting. Alright, anything else we need to do? Not really. We'll keep our speed at... 250 until we make our turn to the left then we'll slow down to 200 maybe even 180 with flaps because what's the flap schedule can't really see it here flap schedule um 180 would be yeah first set of flaps pretty much okay all right three miles we got to make our decision let's double check our checklist um seatbelt barometer yes landing lights yes auto brakes yes spoilers armed yes get speed down to 180 yes zoom flaps gear V rev 5 plus gust. So let's do that right now. Landing um, flaps 30, which is 5 o'clock on the dial. 112. Oh, and there's a VOR. Boom. Let's head, go to heading bug right now. Then we'll finish talking about this. Alrighty, where are we at? 12,000 feet, 250. Let's slow down to 200. Bring those flaps out again and get us down there faster. Set bugs 112 plus five plus gusts. Gusts are like 20 something. So we're actually gonna approach 
near touchdown at that second flag this time um, because of the gusts. Alrighty, let's see here. What are we doing? We are heading due east. And then once we get to 15 miles out, we will um, make our U-turn. Where's the report? I think we went by it already. Should be back there, yeah. So what do we need to do? We need to get our localizer set up. And we need to come down. We're at 10,000 feet. We want to be at 5,000 feet at 15 miles out. We should be good. So let's come down here. Localizer is 108.7 at 100 or 276 degrees at 276. So see, we're pretty much parallel to the runway. So let's actually go like this a little bit. So we're more parallel and we don't get closer. Actually, let's go a little bit like this so we have a bigger gap to turn around. There we go. So once we're 15 miles out, we'll turn around. Why aren't we picking that up yet, though? We're picking this up. Let's do first set of flaps. Because we're slowing down a little bit. There we go. Oh, let's bring the flaps in. Put the spoilers in. First set of flaps. Let's slow us down to 180. There we go. Put the second set of flaps in a minute. Do gear in a minute. Why are we picking that up? There's our DME. There's a localizer. We won't get glide slope yet. I don't know. I guess we're not. I don't know what I'm talking about. 108.7. 276 degrees. Good. Now we just need to slow down and get down to 5,000 feet in 5 miles. Think we can do it? I don't know. Let's bring those spoilers out again. It's going to get mad at us. Because we're so low with spoilers. But that is okay. One final look outside at the Cincinnati greater area. Cincinnati, North Kentucky, that is. We're actually in Kentucky. Cincinnati's right there across the river. There's Cincinnati downtown. Known for having all their stadiums downtown. There's airport. My wife went to school in Oxford, which is out there, or for her PhD. I wasn't going to have story time, wasn't I? But um, we didn't have time for story time. Too much going on, too fast. No story time. I was going to talk about Cincinnati and North Kentucky and the cool little German towns that are here. Anyway, we got a fly plane. All right, we're 13 miles out. Good, our altitude is fine. I'm gonna keep those spoilers off for one more second. Let's actually get down to 5,000 before we turn around, even though it's gonna bring us beyond um, 15 miles, that's fine. All righty. All right, we're coming up on 5,000, bringing those spoilers in, and now we want to intercept at 2,400. So let's, whoops, let's set this to 2,400. That's where we're going to intercept the glide slope at. All right, let's turn this thing around. Um, hopefully we intercept this glide slope okay. We should be good enough that I can go all the way around, intercept at 40 degrees. I hope I gave us enough room. So let's see, that'd be 45, that'd be 40. So there we go, we're going to turn all the way around. Second set of flaps out. Spoilers are armed again. We will bring out gear as soon as we're strained out here. Hopefully that's enough. Um, we can't do auto glide slope yet because it's not picking up glide slope. Weird. It says localizer and ILS. ILS or localizer. There's a glide slope. Here we go. Let's do glide slope, auto glide slope on the autopilot. See if this works. If we intercept below, it'll be fine. That should be fine. It's lit up there. Oh man, I hope I gave us enough room. Hope I gave us enough room. So let's keep going like this. There we go. Gear coming down. And we'll keep descending to 2400 feet. Okay. I really hope this works. In theory, we're fine. Um, can probably slow down to 160 now. Bring back those throttles. And we're gonna make it. We're gonna intercept this too late. Let's bring it this way a little bit. Oh boy. I guess that in theory things should be fine. Next set of flaps. And um, why is it pointing down? Let's kill autopilot. Wait, why is it pointing down? Because it wants to get down to 160. Okay, that's fine, whatever. 
There we go. ILS is picked up. Or local just picked up. Let's see if the Glyso gets picked up. Let's see. All right, we're coming up on our alt. So we're going to use throttles now to keep everything going. Next set of flaps. All I need to do right now is control auto or throttles. It'll line us up with ILS and hopefully the glide slope on its own. Keep that speed up. We want to approach at that second flag. Next set of flaps. Then we have one more to do after that. Let's we'll keep an eye on our three speed with our throttles. So the advice I got for landing this thing is not to go throttles at idle, idle throttles before touchdown like you would in a GA aircraft. Lots of throttle, lots of throttle, more flaps. Um, keep the throttles engaged until about 20, 20, the call out is 20 or so, and then do throttles idle. I'm going to give that a shot. We have a long runway, max braking reversers, so that's fine. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, we're ready at our touchdown speed because of the weather, but we'll see how this goes. Um, ILS is picked up, or localizer is picked up. Let's see if Glide slope gets picked up here. It should. Um, there's some discussion about if this will auto land. I know it does, or I know it used to. In X Plane 10, I used to auto land all the time, all the way until wheels down and everything. And then, um, wow, look at the wind blowing us to the right, even though there's like not much crosswind. Well, wind is from 270 degrees. We're at 8.276, so yeah, it'll blow us to the right a little bit. Anyway, um, in version 2 of the aircraft, in X-Plane 11, I used to auto-land all the time. But now it won't auto-land. It'll get you close. But you have to land yourself, so I don't know what changed. Right, let's bring your speed down. Very hard to control. So what we're aiming for is that second flag because of wind and gusts. And then when we get to the call-out about 20, we will bring back throttles and try to just let it land itself. Just hold it off. If we land three quarters down the runway, it doesn't matter. We just want a smooth landing. I don't care where in the runway we land as long as it's smooth. Throttles up, throttles up, throttles up. And we're just waiting. So do we have time to do a little look outside? I would say yes, but I'm trying to keep my speed up. I don't want to stall. Okay, speed's coming back up now. Let's have a quick look outside. Just quick look. Look at that. There's downtown Cincinnati, which is very gorgeous. Um, my wife went to school for a PhD in Oxford, Ohio, and um, we'd go to Cincinnati quite a bit, actually. And over to Northern Kentucky. Covington is where we are, Northern Kentucky. Very cool area. Um, otherwise, yeah, I didn't really get to story time, but that's okay. All right, we're just gonna come in. I'm gonna talk this out because this would be a really, really, really short video for the second part if I didn't keep talking. <laughs> Let's have a wing view. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Cincinnati, right under the wing, or right over the wing to the left. And outside of Covington with the interstate. Very cool. All right. Are we picking up glide slope? Yep, but we're right where we should be. So, 2,400 feet. We're nine miles out. Four or five. Okay, we should actually be at 3,500 feet because we're nine miles out. But I don't care. We're just gonna sit here at 2,400. <laughs> we're gonna let this thing get us set up, and then we'll land manually, obviously. And we'll keep the throttles up about the second flag until we're 20 up. Oh, are we gonna lose it now? Let's see here. What is going on? Why is it waving around? All right. I feel like I should take over manually, but we're going to trust the system here. 2,400 feet until we're five miles out. We're eight miles out now. There's a glide slope. Good. So now we'll let that take over for a little bit. We could do manual by now. We could have done manual flying all the way back of the Cincinnati VOR. But it's fun just to let this take in for a little bit because the past couple flights we have done mostly manual flying. So is it going to come down? Is it going to come down? See, there's the gusts I was talking about. Oh my goodness, okay. Whew, I'm out of breath because I just had to pause it for 20 minutes to get my kid going for something. So let me get my composure back here. 
Alrighty. See how it says flare? That's the auto landing thing. So I know this is supposed to auto land, even though people were telling me it's not. I have done it many times before. It just doesn't work well sometimes. Look at this. This thing is hunting and hunting and hunting and hunting. And we want to keep our speed up a little bit. So let's come down here. I mean, it is doing its thing, but I think we're going to going to auto. No, I'm just so distraught right now. Not distraught. I'm so, like, discombobulated. Let's fly manually. Good grief. Oh, my gosh. Everything is the way it's supposed to be. Let's just use the gauges, the instruments to follow glide slope. Look at this thing. It's doing that wobble thing that it did when we land on the Galapagos Islands, remember? Because of the winds, the way it interprets that gust. Holy cow. Okay, so we're going to keep our speed at about that second flag because of the gusts. Oh my gosh, this wind is terrible. And then we're going to um, do the whole thing with the throttles. There we go, let's do this. Holy cow. This is crazy. Blow glide slope. Yeah, I know. This wind. This could be very bad. Oh my goodness. We can do this. We can do this. I think. It's going to do that wobbly thing. Oh no. We've had this happen before. Where does the wobbly... Okay, there's 100. A little bit of crosswind from the left. A lot of crosswind from the left. Right wing down left, or left wing down right rudder. Ooh. Oof da. Throttles are still engaged a lot, by the way. A lot of throttle engaged. Oh. Wow. This wind. Oh boy. Oh no. There's 20, we'll bring back throttles now. Oh, what is going on? Left, right rudder. There we go. Nice. We did not bounce, by the way. Let's get that nose wheel down, though. There we go. And reversers, because we can. What are my reversers? <laughs> That's my reversers. Wrong button. <sighs> okay, I can relax. Flaps coming in. Auto brake disengaged. Wow, that was really difficult, all that wind. I think it was a smooth touchdown, though, because it felt smooth. It just took me half the runway to get the um, nose wheel down, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> Otherwise, I think that was actually not terribly bad. I landed to the right of center, which is rare for me. Normally I land left of center. But let's get out of here. And we'll see if we can do replays. It used to be, in the old version of this plane, if you did a replay with lights on at night, the airplane became transparent. So hopefully not. Let's just pull out of the way. We'll do a replay before we touch any gauges or um, not gauges, any switches or knobs because that gets screwed up, kind of. So let's stop right here. Flaps are in, everything is in. Hit the parking brake. Okay, let's do a replay and then we'll figure out where we're going to park. Alright, we're coming in all wobbly because of that terrible wind and gusts. Look at that awesome moon. So we started sinking, but I saved it. And let's just see what really happened here. It, yeah, that's where I saved it and decided to give it another go at it here. So this is where I started focusing. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, nice. And then a really long wheelie. I just wanted it to be smooth with that nose wheel. We did not need to be that smooth. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's a <laughs> the nose wheel is very happy. No damage suspension. Wow. Okay, so other than landing totally to the right because of that awful, awful wind interpretation, that wasn't half bad. Let's check the Wizard the Runway view that I like so much. Let's check that out. Here we are, my favorite view of all. 
man that wind look at that it really took us so i got right wing down but a little too soon and that's why we started sinking too because i was slipping it in i guess i didn't verbalize that but i was slipping it in and it came to be too much so i let go and started over and then we did left wing right rudder a little bit and there we go i didn't do enough left wing so it put us to the right oh well that's okay see the wind still blowing us Alrighty, let's see if there's a tower view that works. There's your awesome tower view. We can zoom in with binoculars. It's so nice that the replay works. And this airplane now doesn't become completely transparent. Oh, that's awesome. Let's just enjoy this. So I saved it. It still, you know, could have been a better, could have been better, but I saved it. And given the issues I've been having, I will take what I can get. So let's back, head back to real time and let's wrap this thing up. All right, so we need to, whoops, let's move the flight plan out of the way. We need to, um, gosh, I really like that view better, but then I can't see my gauges. I'm just trying to compromise here. Anyway, let's um, see where we're going. I have no idea. Whoops, wrong button. All right, let's see. I don't know anything about this airport, other than I've been here before. In fact, the very first time I flew alone, it was to this airport, believe it or not. Well, good. Looks like we need to keep heading straight. We got the gates over here. Good, so let's keep heading straight until we get to that little S curve, and then we'll go left and go to the gates. Okay, so here we go. Parking brake is off. Come down here like this. We're just going to head straight until we get to the S curve, turn left, or straight till we get to the Y, turn left through the S curve. I think I got it. I think I got it. So, anyway, since this video would be super short, let's keep the taxi in. Um, so, yeah, I, I flew, I only flew twice. I didn't go my first flight till I was like 23 or something. My first, yeah, my first airplane at all was when I was like 23. Flew twice to whatever places. And then um, when I met my wife, she was checking out colleges. And she was checking out um, UC, of course, before deciding on Oxford. But, oh my gosh, that is not me controlling the camera. That's just what this plane does in this view. Ugh. Anyway, so she flew here on her own and had a day of meetings or whatever. And then I flew that night. And it was my first time flying alone ever and it was to this airport super awesome so then um, i get to the airport and this is making me sick we get to the airport and we or i get picked up by some people in the department that she was meeting with and um the gal this boyfriend girlfriend the gal that um was driving was driving a stick it was a little subaru and oh my gosh i was so impressed with how well she drove a stick that was my big thing at that time of my life because i drove a stick and very few people could drive well and she drove a stick so well i was so impressed and um all the hills there's lots of hills in cincinnati believe it or not with all the hills and everything and just driving in traffic it was awesome and that was my cincinnati welcome and um we actually ended up on another tour in the back of a minivan with like nine people squished in it. And we're in the very back. And it was fascinating. I could talk about that stuff for hours. But anyway, my very first time flying alone was to this airport. My um, pilot neighbor, who's based out of our hometown here now, he flies here quite frequently. Or, you know, he, no, I'm sorry, he was based out of this airport. Now he's based out of our hometown. But, um,. This is where he used to fly in and out of as home base. Alrighty, let's see here. Let's try to pull into that gate. First, we got to get our lights a little more appropriate here. We're going to get people mad at us. Let's turn all that stuff off. Alrighty, so how are we going to get into that gate without a person, a flag person? I think we're just going to sneak in right here. We can probably turn these off now so we're not making everybody mad. All right, so how are we going to do this? This is hard to do. So let's go like this. 
Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. And let's slow down. Whoa, good brakes. Good brakes. Good brakes, too. Name that movie. Name that movie. All right, let's see. We're almost there. Stay on target. Stay on target. You can name that movie as well. I don't watch many movies, but I sure seem to quote them a lot. All right, we're almost there. Come on. We have to pretend there's a flag person in front of us. And he's going to stop us on whichever one we stop on. He wants to stop us right there. Ugh. All right, set the parking brake. Okay, I am chipper today. Let's calm down and get this thing going. Note the time on the clock. I don't know how long the flight was. What was it? 45 minutes or something. Um, landing lights are already off. Auto brake disarm. Flaps are in pressure from flight to ground. We should have done that a long time ago. All right. Shut down. We're not going to use the APU because it's too noisy. So we're going to get an air cart and a GPU instead. And then we're going to turn on external power. And then we can kill the fuel to each of the engines. And then we're going to turn off all the exterior lights except... Wait, wait a second. Let's go this way. Except the wing logo. There we go. Battery can come off since we have external power hooked up. Come on. There we go. Seatbelt sign can come off. People can start gathering their stuff. And we can turn off whatever switches we want. We can play with everything to our heart's content. Uh, we're going to have this completely shut down because um, um, did I really want to do that. <laughs> I think I did. Completely shut down because people are... Um, at a jet way we don't need the stairs okay hopefully you enjoyed it i certainly did it would have been a long single video instead of made a long first video and a short second one i guess otherwise um the biggest thing was navigating which went very well that's not a problem um anymore we do that often enough landing we're getting better this used to be my best airplane for landing back in the day in X-Plane 10 and early X-Plane 11 with version 1 and 2. But version 3 I've been having problems. Looks like we're, we're parked with a really big plane today. But um, that was acceptable. It wasn't great, but it was acceptable. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it. Next time we fly this thing, we're going to start in Cincinnati and go who knows where. No idea. But we will start here. Hopefully I have to get back in this plane soon. Because if it's too long between flights, I lose... I just lose it, right? I need to fly it more often to get better at it. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it. Please like, please subscribe. Please share with your friends. Hit that like button so we can play the algorithm game on YouTube. And I'm going to start planning some more flights. And I'll see you next time.